Here we're going to look uh, through some advanced auto types uh, with regards to attaching a stop loss and or take profit when initially entering a trade. There are two ways to do this in Iris. Uh, it is all dependent obviously uh, upon whether you are looking to enter the trade or your initial trade straight away and for that to go straight through to market or whether we're waiting for a point in the market to be reached before we enter the initial trade and then attach the stop loss and take profit. First, we're going to look at if you want to enter the current market as it is uh, and place your stop loss, take profit straight away. Here's a chart of the, the euro dollar just to explain how it works. So at the moment, for example, uh, if we do see the market trading uh, at around this, uh, what have we got here, 1.25 to 8 mark roughly. Um, if we wanted to enter the market around this price and simply attach a stop loss and take profit or just a stop loss, the best way to do that is to right click and create a buy order or sell order depending on obviously whether you're going long or short. Uh, alternatively, as most people do from their trading screen, you can do it from the depth screen. Right click, create a buy order. And here we will see, firstly, uh, it will always default with foreign exchange, for example, to a market order, okay? Which means we just wanna get into, or in this case, buy straight into the market at the moment uh, without waiting for a certain point to be reached. And as that buy order goes in and gets us filled, we want to attach a stop loss or a take profit. In this case, let's just attach a stop loss. So we pick our volume, uh, let's say we want a two pounds a point, or in this case, the volume of 20,000. Uh, we're gonna go in at market, we simply tick the box for our, uh, our stop loss trigger. And what we do here is, is we just need to say, let's say our stop loss is gonna be five points away, we simply just put in five points. Just to make sure it's correct, you'll see here on the right hand side, it will denote the price for you uh, roughly based on where the current market is. You'll see that moving because it's obviously factoring in the market price we're gonna get in at as that changes around. So we've ticked the box, we've got our five points, we've got our volume, we simply select buy. Uh, we can have the confirmation box there. Again, that can be removed for anyone who wishes to have the confirmation box removed. And we can click OK. So straight away, you saw our portfolio window got filled with 20,000 uh, euro dollar. Uh, and you can see here uh, in our order pad, which is just standard orders, you can see that the market order went through. Uh, we have a done volume of 20,000 with an average price there of 1.25331. And down here in the contingent order pad, you can see the stop loss has been placed. So for each of the last price less than 1.25279, we're going to sell our 20,000 at market. Okay. In this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exit this trade. So we can go in, right click on the order, amend the contingent order, simply bring this uh, this trigger price uh, down a bit. So uh, actually let's reverse that. So it says greater than, just so it triggers right now. Select OK, hit the confirmation, and you saw the contingent order fired off, it went into the order pad, and then uh, immediately our stop loss was triggered uh, and exited us from our 20,000. So that's the first way to enter uh, enter a trade at the market now. So that would be if you want to go in at market. Uh, alternatively, if you want to select a limit price, just a little bit away from the market now and uh, waiting for the market to kind of come up or down to uh, a fraction before you get hit and then into your trade, that's the best way to execute there. Now it gets a little bit more sophisticated for people who, are, who want to stop entry uh, or want to wait obviously to sell at a lower price than what it's trading at or buy it at a higher price than where it's trading at the minute. In this case, you need to use a contingent order with the if done functionality. To bring up contingent order, we need to right click again anywhere in the screen. From the depth screen here, if we right click and create a contingent order, this is where we'll be able to set our initial uh, stop entry or, or contingent order, uh, followed by obviously attaching an OCO uh, is what we'll do today, uh, in this case for a stop loss and a take profit. So to start with, the original destination that we need is always going to be our if done, because uh, if our original order is filled, then we want to trigger our OCO, which will be our stop loss and take profit and have them active in the market. Obviously, if the order doesn't trigger, uh, the, the stop loss and take profit won't be active. So if done, will then, you'll see in the, in the destination tree over on the left-hand side, uh, will then show us two, a possibility of two legs. So obviously the first order, and if that's done, the second order. So let's go to the first order by left-clicking and highlighting it in blue. This will default to Autodesk. Now Autodesk is simply another way of saying just a standard limit order, which is not what we want because that's what we achieved in our last order ticket. So in this order ticket, uh, we need to start with a fixed contingent order, a fixed CO, which is a standard contingent order. So we'll wait for the contingency or the strategy here on the left hand side to be met before it fires off the order on the right hand side. So in this case, we're trading the Euro dollar uh, and just to make 
bit easy. What we're going to do is we're going to have, um, uh, let's say, if the euro dollar reaches a last price greater than 1.30, which is well above where the current market is, obviously, just for the demonstration purpose. Now, in the case of the price uh, that we're hunting for, the condition is vital we get this right. The condition specifies whether the price you're waiting for is greater than or less than where the market is currently trading. If you get this the wrong way around, your order will trigger automatically or basically instantaneously, and you'll get a bad fill or a fill that you obviously don't necessarily want. So in this case, the easiest way or the trick to this is again, if the price you're waiting for, whether you're going long or short, whether it's uh, um, um, uh, again, a long or a short position, the point you're waiting for in the market, if it is currently above where the current market is trading, then you need to go one of the greater than options. If it is trading or if the, the price you're waiting for is below the current market, you need to select one of the less than or less than or equal to options. So in this case, if we're waiting for the market to get to 1.3 and it's currently trading at 1.25, then we definitely want greater than. Okay, So that once it gets to 1.3 or above, then we want to fire off our order. On the right hand side, in this case, we'd want to buy if it gets to 1.3 for a breakout. Uh, we select our volume, in this case again, 20,000, or two pounds a point, two euros a point, I should say. With the advanced tab here, I always like to set my price type to market. Uh, this will avoid slippage, or natural market slippage, obviously being direct market access. So uh, at fast moving markets, there is always a little bit of natural slippage. Uh, if you place a limit there, and it is already slipped past you, you'll be left with a, a stop loss order sitting in the market unfilled, and potentially your losses growing. Uh, for some people who do have a proper strategy with a limit, that's fine. I do prefend, uh, uh, prefer to, uh, to use the, uh, the market uh, order functionality because it goes straight through. Uh, so what we do now is this is our original order and now what we need to do is go to the second leg on the left hand side to create an OCO to attach around this original if done order. So left click uh, on the next leg of the order there and what we'll see here is it will again default to a fixed contingent order what we want is we want a stop loss and a take profit. So we need to hit the drop down and go to OCO, which obviously stands for one cancels the other. So once one of the stop loss or the take profit is triggered, the other one is canceled, leaving you with no unnecessary uh, orders in the market. So we left click on that, and you can see here in the destination tree on the left, again, it has branched out into two more additional legs. So the first leg, which is the if done, you can see then the fixed contingent order, which is our original order. Now we can see the breakdown of our two OCO legs that we're going to have, so the stop loss and the take profit. Let's click on the top one. It'll already populate it for us, knowing that we're going to trade the euro dollar. Let's say our take profit in this case. So what we're doing is we're buying, uh, our original order was to buy at 1.3. So in this case, we're going to take, take profit is going to be above 1.3. Okay, so let's say we want it at 1.35. So the target price we've got here of 1.35 for our uh, take profit is gonna be greater than where the market will be trading at when we enter the trade because we specified that at 1.3. So again, the condition needs to be greater than. In this case, it is defaulting to a sell because it knows we're long. It's locked in our volume of 20,000 because that's what we've got. Uh, again, we can set a limit from the 1.35 or again, like I like to do, it's going under price type uh, and select market, just so that once that is triggered at 1.35, we definitely get out at market. So that's our take profit. Secondly, our stop loss leg is the second one here. Left click again, it will fill out most details for you. In this case, it's gonna be a stop loss. So let's say our stop loss is gonna be, we're gonna get into the market at 1.3, remember? So stop loss, we're gonna have at 1.25. Now the stop loss at 1.25 will be less than where the current market is trading because the current market will be at 1.3 that we specified. It's defaulted to a sell again for us because we are still long. Only thing we need to change here again is that we're gonna go from limit to market, okay, just to make sure we get out. Once we've done that, we can click OK. The confirmation will come up. You can quickly breeze through it. Just make sure you've set everything the correct way around. Um, so here we've got obviously last, uh, the, the first part, which is gonna be our if done, you can see there is um, last price greater than 1.3. We would like to buy 20,000 euro dollar at market. Then we go, if it obviously reaches a last price greater than 1.35, sell us 20,000, or a last price less than 1.25, sell us 20,000. So take profit and stop loss, all attached. By selecting yes, 
that's simply going to stick this in your order pad for you. So you can see down here in the contingent order pad where all this sits, I'll bring that up into the middle for you, you can see here, euro dollar, uh, if done. So the first leg of it is our original buy, if it reaches a last price greater than 1.3, and then our stop loss and take profit, obviously last price greater than 1.35, our take profit we want to sell, last price less than 1.25 we'd like to sell. Obviously the buy or sell will be denoted under the B uh, forward slash S column there. If you don't like the order or you want to amend any leg of the order, always right click from here and delete contingent order.